This is a big day. Finally, I get a chance to try vSphere 8 in my home lab, which is now in a new location in my new to me home. So my wife and I just moved recently. My personal life's been in a bit of upheaval, but now I've got things settled down, fast internet connection, got my sleeves rolled up, ready to roll. I've already downloaded the code. So I published this article very recently about how to download vSphere 8. So I've already got the bits. Now it's time to get started. Let's slide that Windows Explorer view over. So here on Windows 11, I've downloaded vSphere 8. And first, you want to back up everything. Already done. Next, you want to update your vCSA appliance first. Okay. But one quick sort of backup technique is to do this. So let's go ahead and right click on this and say snapshot. So we can roll back in a pinch. All right, so now I've got a moment in time of VCSA. Now this we can uh, close, that's just IPMI view. And this, I'll just have a quick look at the article. Yes, those are the two files, that's a match. So before you get started with a project like this, this moment in time, which is October 16th, you'd wanna to look to make sure you got the right files. Okay, so that snapshot does not take very long. And if we look at recent tasks here, you'll see that it is done and completed. All right, let's minimize clutter and get rid of this and uh, open it up. So what does open it up mean? Well, in Windows 11, it means you just simply double click on the giant ISO. Gives you a little warning. Now the drive is mounted. So that means we can explore it. Just like uh, previous installs, you simply go to the user in interface installer, UI installer, Win32 in this case, and double click the installer. Why am I doing this? Well, this is the only way. Okay, I'm gonna step back for just a moment and show you. What about VAMI, you might be wondering, like why can't I just use VAMI for updates? Well, that's not gonna work for major code releases. So within 7.0 series, sure it'll work, but going from one major release to another, 7.x to 8.x, no, it's not gonna work, <laughs> okay? And you'll see that right here. Here it is, Sunday, October 16th. I try to do a look for any new app updates and none are available because I have the very latest vCenter in the 7.0 X land already. All right, moving back along. Here it is. Welcome to the vCenter server 8.0 installer. Well, I'm gonna be doing an upgrade today. I wanna to leave my lab as it is. Just get it at 8.0 goodness. All right, it's give me a little warning about platform services controller. Typically in a home lab, you have that all integrated. Are you the EULA? And here we go, vcsa.lab.local is my fully qualified name. Let's connect. So it's connecting the existing server. It should make itself an imposter or make a new VM that's an imposter with the same IP address and name and all that. And then we'll be able to proceed. All right. So it's connected to source, that's grayed out. Username typed in for us. We need to give it a password to get in. So this is all about the source appliance in this section, right? Next, the SXI host that it's running on. Aha! Well, we've got that right here. So right here I have a handy dandy shortcut. Why type it when you can copy and paste it? Because especially uh, especially when it's a little bit long and prone to user error when typing. Here we are in a super micro super server ZND system. So now I've got that in my clipboard. Let's paste it right in there. Fully qualified name. And existing password. Certificate warning, normal. Say yes, continue. Wait a little bit. Okay, things are going swimmingly so far. Specifically, vCenter target deployment target settings. All right, same host. Certificate warning, yes. Set up target vCenter server VM, yep. 
So it's creating a new VM, as I mentioned. So it's a low risk thing we're doing here. All right. It talks about medium by default. That is interesting. Um, I have enough grunt. I have a 12 core system, but to give it eight vCPUs in home lab is a bit cuckoo. Uh, whoa, interesting. There is no small anymore. Oh my goodness. Huh. And we can click next without even clicking storage size, which is also interesting. What on earth? All right, well, <laughs> I do not have hundreds of VMs and I'm definitely in the small category, but it is not letting me do that. So it must be picking up that I bumped up the amount of memory of my existing VCSA. I'm really not sure, but let's see how much memory we gave it. So if you look at all the settings for it, you'll see all the goodies, all the details. I gave it two CPUs and 16 gig of RAM. Well, all right. And it would say memory starvation stuff sometimes. So I guess I'm not going to fight it. I'll just go with it. Storage size, I am intrigued by the fact that it lets me hit next without touching that. So I don't know what it's going to do by default. I think that's a little odd. All right. I want to put it on an NVMe drive, ideally, with lots of storage space left. And I definitely want it in thin disk mode. So where should I put it? Well, we've got... Plenty free here on this M.2. Let's go back one screen. And these are spinny drives. Intel Optane has some decent amount of space too. Now I'll go with this M.2. Thin disk mode, important. All right, here's the important stuff. We're replacing a VM. So fully qualified name and DNS registration, all that should be handled because it's going to be the same as what we have, right? But it also is going to get a temporary address because it's migrating from the other. So this is where things get interesting. It actually has me type a temporary address. Whoa. If I go to HTTP, it's going to have the wrong name. So I'm concerned. <laughs> um... So static, it wants a temporary IP. All right. Fully qualified domain name optional. All right, let's alt tab our way back here and you'll see the name here, vcsa.lab.local. Does it let me give it the same exact name, right? This is a new vCenter server. All right, MAC address, that's a new little warning. Send a migration, transfer source, network configuration to the target. Networking, okay, networking, VM, interesting. So I want to do a MAC address impersonation. So I need to make a change. On the host in question, go to configure and go to networking and go to virtual switches. Under virtual switches, let's uh, resize that a little bit. Okay, the VM network. So the VM network has three little dots. Edit the settings. Under security, we've got MAC address changes. So we're gonna accept those and click OK. And now we should be all right. All right, DHCP, there we go. Hit Next. Uh, is it letting me proceed? Uh-oh. I'm not sure. Nothing really happened when I click Next. It still seems kind of kludgy. All right, so we do static. Okay, we've got an available IP address where I made sure nothing responds to ping on that IP. Always a good idea. And I'm going to give it an IP address, 
All right, so we have a temporary IP, but it's going to have the wrong name. This bothers me a lot. I really want a DHCP to work, so I'm thinking long and hard about my next step here. Let's see if we land with a VM with the same name in the end. So source is VCSA, network details, static, temporary IP. It's on a crummy drive, so I'm not sure how that happened. Let's fix that. And M.2 with plenty of space. Okay, so there's all the summary stuff. And finish. And now we wait and see what happens. All right, that apparently went well. Let's pull the curtain back a little bit and see what it's done here. Um, we'll have the same name and all. <laughs> Let's look. Okay, so we've got the old one at IP address 197, and then VMware vCenter server at IP address 159. Um, all right, 30 gig, 48 gig of disk. 16 gig, 48 gig of disk. So it left the disk alone. A lot more RAM. Two vCPUs. Eight. Just kind of crazy. All right, let's uh, just get this out of the way again and let it do its thing. So I can continue the vCenter server by logging into this IP address. That bothers me. It should be by name, by vCSA. So I'm already worried. I think this is botched and I'll have to do it again. Okay, stage two. There was a brief message there that was a little interesting. Whole bunch of warnings. Okay, town time, here we go. Copy from the source. Tests, events, performance metrics. Hmm. I I want it all. I don't know how much longer it's going to take, but I guess I'll just walk away. Okay, we see IP. But dang, this bothers me, right? Ooh, post upgrade. There it is. FQDN will be VCSA. All right. Oh my gosh! Finally, they made it easier. This is awesome. Oh yeah, and backups. I should mention file-based backups. I have of my VCSA, not just that snapshot. Oh, I'm now excited that this is actually going to work. I'm so glad they added this. It made it a lot easier. So now was, I didn't have to change my FQDN. My DNS forward and reverse lookup is already working. And I was able to just leave it alone by temporarily hanging out in another IP address. It will be shut down once the network configuration is activated. All right, I'm going to let it rip. Now that MAC address change that I allowed, I can turn that back off. But I don't need to install is over. All right, to my amazement, it says it's done already. And uh, this is awesome. Click the link to get started. Oof. I'm gonna click that link and it closed the window for me. Well, that was kind of interesting. And it opened Edge Browser <laughs> of all browsers. All right. Even though I've got Chrome as my default, let's just paste that URL over here. Well, hang on. All right, I'm not gonna fight it. So it's saying Workflow Installer. What? There, it got rid of the workflow installer in the URL. And now we're back to a plain old login page. So, um, here we go, the drum roll moment. Is this really vSphere 8 with the same old host name? Ta-da, 8.0.0, awesome. Let's have a look here. 
just want to point out when I said about FQDN, this is a prereq for VMware vSphere, right? It's been for many years. So NS lookup, VCSA, there it is, .lab.local, fully qualified name, yep. And how about by name, uh, sorry, by IP. Reverse lookup, yes. IP address 97 gives back a name of VCSA. So everything was set in my Ubiquity router, in my case, an edge router, but you may have a different way of doing fully qualified domain names. But anyhow, I had all that set up before on 7.0, and now I have it on 8.0, and I'm pretty happy about all this. I do have to deal with licensing, but uh, that's good. Let's see how Chrome does. So Chrome, let's do a new login here. In my lab environment, I got LastPass saving the password for a little bit of easy use there. And we are in pointing to this vCenter server. And the old one is still there. All right, so how did they do the magic here? It's not really magic, but let's see what it says about the MAC address for the network adapter. And there it is. It says automatic, uh, 0954. Let's see, what did it used to be? Different, huh? Okay, let's go back to this guy. So what's happening here is, well, I'm not sure, but we end up with the same IP address, so that's good. If we point to this one, the last time it was powered on was .97, well, we're not gonna power it on. We got the new one working. Anyhow, if we right click and look for snapshots, guess what we're gonna find? Take a guess, take a guess. Nothing, because <laughs> the snapshot's associated with the old one. All right, anyhow, this is awesome. Um, one of the things I like to do is point to the top level there and go to More Tools, Create Shortcut, open his new window and create myself a new vCenter that runs full screen here without the URL line. Freeing up a little bit of space. All right, data store usage, a little bit of warning there. Interesting. If I click on this disk and look at the summary tab, I'll see that it's, well, so what? I'm not sure what the deal is there. Plenty of room. All right, reset that to green, that's fine. And then of course, licensing. So managing licensing, well, yeah, I need to blur that out, but I need a vSphere 8 license, right? So that's about it. At this moment in time, or last one I checked, I was still only available from VMware, but let's hope it's available from vExpert Program as well as vMug Advantage soon, if not already. Hopefully you found this video helpful. I want to go play with my own lab now, and uh, hopefully you had similar success going to vSphere 8 as well. Thank you so much for joining me. Please consider a like, even better, a subscribe. That really helps other people find this on YouTube. It's always greatly appreciated. After coming up on 11 years of, uh, or over 11 years of content creation at Tinkertry.com, your readership and your viewership on YouTube has all been greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. Bye for now.